the size of our sigma matrix. Okay, so if we look at this matrix, it probably makes more sense to do a, a transpose, which is going to be 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, negative 2, and then we'll multiply by its transpose, which is 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, negative 2. And we should get a 2 by 2 matrix. So we get 9 plus 4 plus 4. We should get 6 here plus 6 minus 4. And then we should get 4 plus 9 plus 4. And then 4 plus 9 plus 4. Am. Nothing like doing all that work and having to delete it all. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, God. Uh, okay, just because all oh, just because you multiply the matrix wrong. Hot dog. Okay, so six, six, negative four should be this one. Six plus six minus four, and then we should have six, six minus four. We should have four, nine, and four. So this should be this should look like this. Okay, so there's our AA transpose. Now we do need to go back. We need to find the eigenvalues of this. So minus lambda i. This is going to be 17 minus lambda 8, 8, and 17 minus lambda. We need to find the determinant of this, which is 17 minus lambda squared minus 64. Hopefully this comes out to be a little nicer than earlier. Now it's symmetric. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, then the eigenvector should be orthogonal. Good to know. I will never make this mistake again. Until next time. 289 minus 34 lambda plus lambda squared minus 64 is 0. So 289 minus 64. So we get lambda squared minus 34 lambda plus 225. Two hundred and twenty-five is a is a root, isn't it? So that's fifteen. But I need to get stuff that adds to thirty-four. So two twenty-five is fifteen and fifteen. That only gets me to thirty. So let's bump one of these up. I can bump one of them up by a factor of three, right? So forty-three and five. Will that get me to thirty-four? No, that gets me to 38. Uh, well, how did I get 43? This should be 40. <laughs> so that's not right. That is not right at all. Uh, incorrect. Uh, hello? Can you erase this, please? Can we... Okay, why are you not erasing? One note, what the hell is going on? Like, just, just, just do your job, please. 45 and 5. Yes. Uh, I don't think that'll get me 34, though, will it? So maybe I need 25 and 9. Maybe I need 25 and 9. <laughs> 25 and 9 should do it. Yeah, 25 and 9 is 34. Okay, so this should factor as lambda minus 25, lambda minus 9. So we have two eigenvectors, 25 and 9. Perfect, that's way nicer than what we had before. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the eigenvector of 25. We know that our two by two should be 17 minus 25. So 17 take away 25 is negative eight. And if we get the reduced row echelon form of this matrix, we should have a 1, a negative 1, a 0, and a 0. 
So this means that the eigenvector associated with 25 will have y as a free parameter. And then this here tells me that x minus y is equal to 0. So that means x is equal to y. x should also be equal to t. So we get a single eigenvector 1, 1 for lambda is equal to 25. We have to do the same thing for 9. So lambda equals to 9. We get 17 minus 9. Is that just positive 8? Okay, so this is just going to give us a full matrix of 8s. And the reduced or echelon should be 1, 1, 0, 0. And we'll do something very similar here. We're going to set y is equal to t because it's a free parameter. And then this equation here is that x plus y is equal to 0, so x should be equal to negative y. Okay, this is looking way better than before. Let's factor out that t, so we have negative 1 and 1, and that's going to be our second eigenvector that we need. Sweet. Okay, so let's collect the information that we have. We have that lambda equals 25. We have that lambda equals 9. That means that sigma, our very first sigma should be root 25 or 5. And our second sigma should be root, uh, root 9, which is 3. The vector associated with 9 we found to be negative 1, positive 1. And the vector associated with 25 is positive 1 and positive 1. So we can use this information here to calculate the sigma matrix. So the sigma matrix, I thought this was going to be a square matrix, but maybe it's not. So we need to get A as a U sigma V transpose, right? Is that how this works? U sigma V transpose, yeah. Now the u is going to be created from these orthonormal vectors. Okay, so u we know is 2 by 2. Sigma I guess has to be 2 by 3 so that my v is going to be 2 by 3, right? because we need a to be 2 by 3. So we're, that's going to force sigma to look like a 2 by 3. So sigma is going to, we need to have, I believe, the biggest sigma value first, which is going to be our square root 25, and then the next one uh, coming along that kind of faux diagonal. So that should take care of sigma. Next, let's create u, and we need to normalize these. So we have that this first one, the magnitude of this first vector is root 2. So we can normalize just by dividing by its magnitude. And same with the second one, it's also going to be root 2. So negative 1 over root 2 and 1 over root 2 should do the trick here. Putting these together should give us our matrix U. So that should give us a 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, negative 1 over root 2, and 1 over root 2. So now we go back, we make A transpose A. I'll just do it over on the side. So let's calculate A transpose A. That's going to give us 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, negative 2 times the original, so 3, 2, 2, 2, 3, negative 2. Okay, and this should be hopefully a 3 by 3 matrix, so we get 9 and 4, which is 13, we get 6 and 6, we get 6 minus 4, we get 6 and 6, we get 4 and 9, that's weird, but 4 minus 6, ooh, a new number. Ooh, a new number. Oh, I don't know if I like that. 6 minus 4. We get 4 minus 6. Oh, nice. Okay. And 4 and 4. So this should be a symmetric matrix. 
I know. It's like, you can tell how often all of us have done singular value. Well, I mean, for me, I've never done singular value decomposition, but but you can tell how much we, we do it, right? It just, it doesn't come up that often. But apparently it's a thing that you need to know for some of the machine learning algorithms that we're teaching in our kind of second, second level post-bot courses. Okay, so if this is our three by three, we can calculate the eigenvalues of this one. So we take A transpose A minus lambda I and calculate its determinant. So this is gonna be hopefully not messy but probably messy. It's already looking like it's gonna be a disastrous. Okay, I feel like we're on the home stretch here. My dudes, we're on the home stretch. Oh, by the way, by the way, uh, by the way, gold, have we, have we got gold into the chads yet? We might need to update that. Is gold in there? I don't think gold is in there, is he? Yeah, boy! No, well, we'll have to get gold into the uh, we'll have to get gold into the chads as well here. We'll we'll we'll, we'll start bugging Enigma to get him uh, to get him in there with us. We got Obi, we got Stuki, yeah, Don, Zach, Dan, yeah. We're just missing gold, I think, from the list that's on uh, the elements. This is going to be a terrible determinant, isn't it? Should I do row operations here, or do I care? Do I just go for it? Do you think things are going to cancel? I can probably factor. Send it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, send it into Wolfram. Yeah, we could do that too. My students, unfortunately, I mean, if I was teaching Data Science 420, maybe they would have some ability to use Wolfram. I mean, I certainly use it in my encryption class. But maybe it's beneficial for the students here to see how to actually do this. It's gonna, I hate doing three, I hate doing three by three determinants. They're so terrible. Okay, so we need to subtract 12 times two times two. So 48, so subtract 48 and subtract 48, 12 times two times two. And then we need to subtract this, which is gonna be four times 13 minus lambda. We need to subtract this, which is four times 13 times lambda, that's nice and subtract this, which is 144 times eight minus lambda. That's, I don't know about this. This is looking a bit weird. So we need this to be zero. Let's see if we can simplify and do some factoring. Oh man, this looks terrible. None of those are gonna cancel, are they? Oh my God. Yikes, yikes. Well, I guess, what is this? This is like negative eight of these and 144 of these. Can somebody see where I might be able to factor something? I don't think I can factor something here, can I? Maybe if I expand and collect something, I'll be able to be factored. I don't know. Yeah, three by threes are just, especially with a characteristic polynomial, they're just a pain in the butt. There's no way around them being annoying. I was hoping maybe I could, sometimes you can kind of sneakily get through it by like finding something you can factor. Like I'm still trying to hold on to a glimmer of hope that maybe I'll be able to factor something. So if I keep this as 96 and I go eight times 13, what do I get? I get 104 and I get plus eight lambda. 
And here we get 144 times 8, which is really big. <laughs> and 144 lambdas. Uh... Uh, yeah, that's not nice. 144 and 8 is 152. Shit. Uh, 1152, 104, and 96. What in that? What is that? What is that? I have not been, I have not been here enough. <laughs> Here, well, you've been playing some good games, man. That, that Mori was good. I, I like the Mori. That was a cool game. So what do we have here? 169 minus 26 lambdas plus lambda squared. So this should give us that 1352 positive like. And then we'll get a minus 169 lambda. We will get a 26 times 8, so negative 208 lambda plus 26 lambda squared. Please sanity check me. It's been a very long week. So if that is the case, then yes, we can get rid of the constant, factor out lambda in some way, shape, or form. That's going to give us a, this should be a lambda cubed, right? So let's actually factor out a negative lambda. So that's going to give us a lambda squared. How many lambda squares do we have? We should only get the 8 squares and the 26 squares. So we should have 26 and 8, which is 34. So that's going to be a negative 34 lambda. So that should take care, I think, of this, this, and this. The rest should just be straight up lambdas. So we have 152 take away 169 take away 208, which is negative 225. And if I'm factoring out the lambda, that's going to leave me with, whoa, positive 225. Whoa, my mind is blown. That's the characteristic equation that we had the other time. So we know that this factors into a lambda, what was it, plus, no, lambda minus 9, lambda minus 25? So we have three lambdas to worry about, 0, 9, and 25. Do I care about, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to do all of them, right? So if lambda equals 0, let's try this one. So that's going to be 13, 12, 2, 12, 13, negative 2, 2, negative 2, and 8. If lambda equals to 9, what do we get? What's 13 minus 9? 4. So 4, 12, 2, 12, 4, negative 2, 2, negative 2, and 4. And then we have lambda equals 25. We're going to have to take care of 2. 13 minus 25 and negative 12. 12, negative 12, negative 2. So that one's obvious. I can see what's going on there. What's 8 minus 25? Negative 17. Getting some really weird numbers here. This one's a little more obvious where it could go. So I, I can see that one of these is just going to be zipped out of here, right? And I can probably divide by 12 and maybe by like 2 or something. So how do I want to take care of this one? So we could probably use row 3 as like our leading one. So let's take row 2 minus 6 row 3s. So that'll give me a 0, 0, and negative 2 plus 6 times 17. Negative 2 plus 6 times 17, which is 100. And then we can divide this by, by 2. 
So 1, negative 1, and negative 17 over 2. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and divide this row 3 by 100. I don't need to write out a new matrix. I don't think we'll just write this as a 1. And if we rearrange some stuff, we should have 1, negative 1, uh, 0, and then we'll have 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So here's our reduced row echelon form here for 25. What does that tell us about the vector that we're going to need? So x, y, and z. x, y, and z. So x, so y is our free variable. z is always equal to 0. And x is going to be in terms of y, right? So x minus y is 0. So that means that x and y have to be the same thing. So our eigenvector should look like this. So a single eigenvector for 25. I don't think I'm going to be good here. Did I do my substitutions correctly? So 13 minus 9 is 4, right? 13 minus 9 is 4. 8, oh, 8 minus 9 is negative 1. I am a dummy. Whoops. That's why it's not working. Hey, hee hee. Okay. <clears throat> Back to the drawing board, found my mistake. Okay, I still, yeah, I still think I wanna do row one minus two row twos. And I still think I wanna do row two minus six, oops, row threes. So that should give me four minus four, 12 plus four, two plus two, 12 minus 12, 4 plus 12, uh, right? <laughs> negative 2 plus 6, negative 2 plus 6, perfect. That's what I want. Then I'm going to take row 3 and I'm going to divide that fucker by 2. Perfect. Okay, so now we can move our leading one up. We can divide, we'll get rid of one of these, right? I don't really care. So I can basically get rid of one of these rows for freeze. And then we need to divide this by 16 to get our second leading one. So four over 16 is a fourth. So the last thing we need to do is row one plus row two, and that should get us into the reduced row echelon form that we need to finish this. So we'll get a zero here, and then negative a half plus a fourth. Oh, man. Negative one half plus one fourth. Wait, so, okay, okay, okay. What do we have to make free here? The free variable is z. Who wants to be free? And then that makes y negative a quarter z, and x positive a quarter z. And if we factor out t, we get the eigenvector that we want, which is 1 fourth, negative 1 fourth, and 1. Okay, almost there. Let me just put a little box around that. Okay, last one. When lambda equals 0, why is there a 13 here? That's so weird. Uh, let's do row... Oh, you know what I could do? I could actually do row one minus row two <laughs> and get a free leading one. Look at me go. One, negative one, two, minus negative two. That's four. Let's actually do row two minus six row threes along the way too. I, I like that idea. So row 2 minus, that should be 0, 13 plus 12 is 25. Negative 2 minus, ooh, this is weird. Negative 2 minus 6 times 8. Negative 50, what the heck? Oh, I see. So row 1. Oh, okay, cool. So row 3, we can just subtract two row 1s, and that's going to be our 0 row. Cool, so we get rid of that. Excellent, I can see where that's going. Row two, we just divide by 
25, I guess. So we get 1, negative 1, 4, 0, 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 0. Beautiful. And then we need row 1 plus row 2 to finish up the job here. Okay, I can still do row operations, that's great. So four minus two is two. All right, so that tells me that my eigenvectors should look like, let's just write this as t out here. So what's gonna be, so z is free, y is two t, and x is negative two t, whoops. T is on the outside, so I just need negative two, positive two, and one. Okay, so we finally have our third eigenvector. Holy moly, all right. Now, next and next thing we gotta do, I guess, is normalize these things. So what's the, what's the length here? Four plus four plus one. Sweet. What's the length here? one over 16 plus one over 16 plus one. How many 16sies is that? So 16, so 18 16sies. So something over four. I can factor out a nine, so three root two over four. And the last one for V3, it should be one plus one under this, so root two. Okay, so that means we're gonna get three vectors. We have to divide this one by three. So we're gonna have negative two thirds, two thirds, and one third. So here's our first normal vector that we need. This last one's gonna be the next easiest to do. We just have to divide by root two. And this middle one's gonna be a pain in the ass because we have to divide everything by three root two over four. So what's my normalized vector gonna be here? I have to divide by this. So I have to take like one fourth and I have to multiply by the reciprocal. So that means the three, so we're gonna get one over three root two, negative one over three root two, and four over three root two. Holy F. So, okay, so <laughs> does that mean I can just stuff these in an appropriate way into my V matrix, please? What does this mean? So V transpose should be V3, V2, V1, based on how I've labeled them. So is it true that V3 is gonna be one over root two, one over root two, zero. And then we get our one over three root two, negative one over three root two, four over three root two, and then negative two thirds, two thirds, one third. Please tell me that's it. Oh my gosh, please tell me that's the answer. How did we do? Did we get it? Did it work? Holy shit, that feels good.